episode. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what I do when I go fly fishing. We've had a, a viewer ask for this, so this is what we're going to do. I use an Orvis Recon 8 foot 6 uh, 5 weight line. I use an Orvis reel. This is actually one of, it's an encounter too because I had an encounter rod, but I have a tendency to break my fly rods. So, uh, this time of year, obviously, the trout are a little slower, the, the water's still cold, and there's not much stuff hatching. So, typically, I use nymphs. This is a little nymph I have. Uh, it's just a copper bead with a hook and a little bit of wire on it. This one I've actually caught fish on. It's a little tore up, but I have more. So, let's go through the steps of what I use. All right, so let's start with my setup. So, obviously, I have the rod and reel. Your fly line. Your fly line is your weight. That, that is what moves the fly down through the water. That's what's able, to, it catches the current. That's how you get it out there. That is your weight that carries you out there. That is the weight that goes down the water. Now, from that, which this is just a plastic covering on normal, normal, like a kind of a braid of fishing line. So, then you have your leader. Now, my leader is nine foot, five weight. Since it is, uh, I, this rod is for five weight. Um, and this is nine foot long. Of course, I cut it. It, it kind of goes from thick to thin. It goes from thicker, which I use a float, which I'll explain later. But it goes from thick to thin. Now, after it goes too thin, it's so small that you can't basically do anything with it. They sell uh, 3X, 8.5 pound. It just comes with little spools. And I put, since I'm nymphing, Nymphing is more of a fly that sinks like I showed you guys earlier. Since I'm nymphing, I'll put on about 12 to 16 inches of line on, and then I'll put on my, my nymph. But usually, if I'm in a bigger, a bigger stream, I'll put on two of these. Now, I'll explain to you how I do that. After I put on 16 to 12 to 16 inches and then my nymph, I'll tie on another 16 to 12 inches 12 16 inches through the eyelid of my fly and to another fly i know that probably doesn't make sense but you can fit more line in that eyelet into another another fly so that's two line that's two bugs you have in the water now since i'm nymphing i usually use a float because these sink i if you're using dry flies you can when you throw them out there much more insects float on top of the water warm water summer late spring fishing which i'll show you guys later but in another episode but since i'm using a, a nymph i have to use a float this float will indicate it's the indicator people use indicators all the time for different kinds of fishing but i'll show you guys kind of how i do it like i said in a small stream like this you don't have much room to catch and generally when you're fly fishing you don't like to fly fish uh, below too much because your fly line is what's coming back towards you and you want to give the best presentation to the fish as possible because you only have a couple of casts in such a small stream like this. But, so, when it comes down to it, if, the, if you're fishing above you, for instance, like this hole, there's a hole right there, I'm below, and, I and there's not much room for me to cast up there because there's so many trees. The best way to do it, I can explain it, is throw it up, so I'll go one, two, three, four, float, then the fly. Now, when it's coming, when the water's coming towards me and I'm downstream from it, I should flick my fly line, since it's going to be coming down before me, I should flick it to the side. The more you flick it to the side, the fly line will go towards the bank, but your float and your bobber, as you can see right here, is coming towards me. There's not going to be trout laying up against this rock, but they'll be laying out there in the middle, but they'll see the fly, and the fly line will be on the bank. They'll see the fly and you'll see the float, but they won't see your fly line, which will be basically on the bank. So let's do this again. So I'll throw it out there. One, two, letting it roll out like a carpet. Three, four. Fly line, float, fly. When it coming towards me, I guess, as I'm stripping it a little bit, give it a little bit more movement, I'll flick it to the side a little bit. Now, with your float flicking up like that, it's an okay thing. You'll be able to just float it up and it'll fall down. It, it won't matter to the fish at all. But... With that being said, the fly line, you can slow it down. If you're fishing in a really fast current, it's going to be hard to get that fly line to go 
go the way you want it. So you gotta really, you gotta really flick it. So if I'm fishing like this, I roll cast it up there because I don't want to whip it anymore. I'll just flick it to the side. All right, everybody. So this is basically in a small quarters like this stream right here. There's a not, there's a lot of hang hanging over. There's not much room to cast, and obviously you have to have a lot of room to cast in a small stream. But if you guys have seen any other YouTube videos on it, it's not a whip. So for example, I'll throw it out there. I'll throw it out there. I usually go three or four times. So once I throw it out there, I let it fall in. But when I've let it fall in, the way the best way that I can explain it is like using is like rolling out a carpet. It should go, it should go your your fly line, your float, and then your fly. Because it should roll out like a carpet. So it should start back here and roll out there. That way, if you if you get snagged or anything like that, you'll be able to get it out there with just a little bit of a, a whip. But what, speaking of whipping. You shouldn't whip your line. If you hear a smack or a crack on a whip, then you're flying and you're, you're going too fast. The best way I explain it is going like a clock. You just go back and forth, back and forth. And it's not in your wrist. It's not in your wrist, it's in your elbow. It should go from your elbow back and forth, back and forth. If it's going, if it's going too qu quick, it will make that whipping noise. Now one of the most effective casts I can use in a, such a small stream like this one with the hole where I'm fishing downstream of it, I will roll cast it. Now I wasn't a roll cast, but I'll show you a roll cast. So I'm stripping it, I'm pushing the fly line over the side so it doesn't, I can control how much, how much the speed of my float and my fly coming down the water. Okay, so I have it going in. Now I'll pull it back. You see my float? It's right there. I will flick it up. And it does the same thing. In a small stream like this, this can be a crucial thing so you don't lose so many flies. So I'm stripping it. It's coming down. My fly line's on the bank. My float's coming down the stream towards me. Well, I don't like it. There's no, there's no fish biting. I can roll cast it. Now, when I roll cast it, it did the same thing. Fly line, float, through the leader to the fly and the tip, the tippet, then the fly. I don't like that cast either, so I'm going to roll cast it. That is one of the most crucial things out there when fishing a small stream. Now, when you do that, it takes some practice. You gotta know how much slack to be in, to be in there. Because if you don't have very much slack and it's like this, look how, look how well that fly cast went. You can't go very far. You gotta have more slack in there. And a fly, and a, and a roll cast, you can do this as many times as you need to to get it out there, because it doesn't put too much pressure on the fish. Of course, it makes a little splash with your float, but some people don't even use a float when nymphing. This is just what I do. All right, everybody, so for instance, now I've changed directions and I'm fishing downstream. One of the best techniques I can use is find the bubbles, find the white spots. Where the white spots are, that's where the current's going down the most. That's where all the, all the bugs are. That's the best way to do it, in my opinion. I find that more fish lay in the lines in the water where there is the white, white foam, bubbles, anything like that. That's where, the, that's where the flies are going to be. That's where the fish are going to lay. Because, of course, fish eat flies that's their natural bait so in instances like this where I'm fishing downstream I'll throw it up above me one two three four I let it roll out once again fly line float tip it leader fly now with it fishing upstream I'll put my tip up a little bit so my fly line's not too much on the water if I want to float it up here above me if I float it up here above me I strip it like I said Flip, flick it up so my float does all the work going downstream. And it, it might take a while, but it does, it does the work itself. See, as it goes along, I flick it up right in front of me. Doesn't take too much pressure on the fish. You just slowly do it. Now, as it goes down through there, if I didn't do it, my fly line would get snagged like that. It would, it would, my fly line would go down faster, and that's an easy way to get snagged. If you constantly keep it up, keep the fly looking real, it will go, one of, the, one of the easiest things I've ever said to Dawson when teaching him how to fly fish, and the guy who taught me how to fly fish, is let the water do the work. All you have to do is put the fly in the right spot, let the water do the work. And that is one of the most crucial things I can say when coming to fly, when beginning to fly fish, doing fly fishing, it's, it's letting the water do the work. Now as that fly floats down through here, I'll continue to roll it up. 
let it roll down through there. So the fish, the first thing it sees is your fly instead of your fly line. Okay, so last thing I'll talk to you guys about when especially doing early spring, winter fly fishing, I'll, I'll talk about my flies. Now, I, I, this is my absolute 100% favorite. I use a, a tungsten rainbow print size 16. Size 16 hooks are really, really, really tiny. And I, I'm, I've got actually some ordered from West Virginia Fly Guys, who I've said before, we have a sponsor uh, partnership deal with. Uh, really good, really good quality flies if you guys are looking into getting into fly fishing or you already do fly fish. Uh, I use these little nymphs like I showed you guys before. Some of my absolute favorites, trout tear them up uh, any time of the year, whether it's cold outside. But later in the year, they'll get into dry flies, which I'll show you guys in some different episodes. All right, everybody. Well, this is going to be the end of this episode, teaching you guys a little bit what I do when I try to fly fish. Try to fly fish, of course. But thank you guys for watching ID Outdoors. We appreciate all the support. Once again, hey, look at West Virginia Fly Guys. They have some really good flies out there. And we're going to go out here and try to hit the water. And you guys will see this in a different episode. Thank you guys for watching ID Outdoors. We'll catch you later. Peace.